Stay with us. It's a joint meeting of the northern governors and key traditional rulers from the northern states. And the meeting place is the government house in Kaduna State. The Sultan of Sokoto and the governor of Kaduna State raise concern over the insecurity situation in the north. And I believe we are always ready to partner. I'd like to thank some of the governors that we've known, or even all the governors who have done a lot to unraise the problem of security in our various states. Our region faces serious challenges. The economic situation in the country has affected us. The insecurity has destroyed rural economies and many other challenges about federalism stare us in the face. After several hours of meeting behind closed doors, the governors resolved that the call by their southern counterparts that the presidency be zoned to the south is unconstitutional. According to them, the 1999 constitution as amended states that an elected president must meet the constitutional requirements which include scoring majority votes and also score at least 25% of the votes cast in two-thirds of the state of the federation and nowhere is zoning allowed in the constitution. The forum unanimously condemned the statement by the Southern Governors Forum that the presidency must go to the south. The statement is quite contradictory with the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended that the elected president shall a score the majority votes, b score at least 25 percent of the votes cast in two third states of the Federation. C, in the case of run up, simple majority win the election, will win the election. The governors also react to the controversy on who collects value added tax, a matter which is currently before the Supreme Court. The Northern State Governor Forum considered the ongoing national debate on collection of value added tax, VAT. As responsible leaders, while we are concerned by the fact that the matter is subsidies, we, however, for the purposes of educating the public, make the following observations. A. The judgment of the Federal High Court calls to question the constitutionality of VAT, withholding tax, education tax, Niger Delta Development Commission, National Information Technology Development Agency, 13% derivation, National Economic Development Council, and many other currently levied and collected by the Federal Government of Nigeria and the Federal Inland Revenue Service. B, Rivers and Lagos State Government had enacted their own VAT laws, and the Southern Governors Forum has, have expressed support for this course of action. C, VAT is being confused by these state governments as a sales tax. If every state enacted its own VAT law, multiple taxation will result in increase of prices of goods and services and collapse in interstate trade until and unless the Supreme Court pronounces judgment on the substantive matter between River State and the federal government, the matter is subjudice. And Northern State Governors Forum would respect this. This position conveyed by the governor of Plateau State is unanimously agreed to by the governors of the 19 northern states. It now remains to be seen how their counterparts in the south will respond to these strong views from the Northern Governors Forum.
Welcome back. So joining us to weigh in on the subject matter, we've got uh, uh, Dr. Ahmed Sulaiman, who is a lecturer in public law at Madhu Bello University, Zaria. And then we also have Kach Ononuju, who joins us from our studios in Abuja. Gentlemen, good morning, and thank you for joining us on the program today. Let me start with you, Dr. Uh, Sulaiman. Uh, uh, on this matter, yes, of course, different perspectives, and they will continue to be uh, different uh, opinion on this subject matter. How does this come across to you, having heard the position of the Northern Governors and some traditional rulers who attended the meeting? Uh, I'm not surprised with what happened this week. We've been expecting it since July, especially arising out of the position taken by the Southern Governors about uh, President must come from uh, the South. But the issue here, let me put a context. I want you to contextualize the issue from a historical point of view. Uh, the position of the Northern Governors is that this is not constitutional. Now, in reality, it is a convention that has been brought up to keep peace between Nigeria. Now, but the issue here is that you have to look back into Nigerian history. Uh, since the beginning of Nigeria independence, there were a lot of crises that moved into climates and anticlimax of the civil war. After that, some Nigerian, some Nigerian leaders learned a lesson. And the lesson is that whenever Nigerian is a package, there is always to keep Nigeria together in the fact of power sharing. But the problem with power sharing is that it has not been given constitutional backing. So because of this constitutional backing, politicians take advantage of these fault lines, just like the South have taken advantage of this fault line before. But this is a time where it became Nigerians to come together. The threat they are causing, the hyper hypertension, the tension rising in Nigeria is too fragile, is too, we are pushing Nigeria too much to the edge. If you read the book written by Tony Momo, experience in uh, disintegration. This fact has been a recording decimal in Nigerian history. We are not learning. We need to learn. We are not progressing. We need to learn from global development. Chamberlain, let me, let me cite global example here. Every country, every, every set just, of... Just hang on a minute. Before you get to that next point, could you shed some light on what you mean by just as the South has taken advantage of the fault lines before? Yes. Now, Nigeria has been built up on some fault lines. One, federalism, the issue of federalism. Two, the issue of, the issue of uh, restructuring. These are fault lines that all regions, all, I mean all politicians from all regions try to capitalize on in order to score a political point. You'll come to realize that on, after all this hypertension, they will come to settle down and they will understand themselves. This is like a bargaining coin. Everybody is throwing in a bargaining coin. Just like when they, when they start feel like pushing, they so much hamper on the structuring, they so much hamper on, for instance, this VAT, current VAT issue. The so issue how, how is exactly, everybody... how exactly or specifically has the South taken advantage of the said fault lines? Yeah. Now, for instance, this is, this is a convention. And a convention is not a, a, a last constitutional backing. It's a product of bargaining. So instead of loading it up in a newspaper and setting in a common Nigerians against each other, is it not better, Chamberlain, to sit down as politicians, try to uh, bargain, negotiate? Chamberlain, if you are looking for courtship, you don't go intimidating, you don't go intimidating the, your fiancé, you must marry me. You find a way, find a way of winning. Now, although... As a person, I don't even like the idea of insisting that a president should come from the north or should come from the south. We, but if the politicians are still leading us this way, they should stop intimidating themselves. They should stop raising so much pressure on it. What advantage has the resolution and declaration they made July given to Southern presidency? In fact, it has even raised so much temper. Instead of that, just from that time to now, 
Yes. Okay, I haven't heard your uh, opening uh, comments. Uh, let's get bringing Mr. Nonoju as well on this subject matter. Uh, Mr. Nonoju, how does, were you expecting this as well? Because, I mean, Dr. Sulaiman said, well, he's not surprised at this stance. Yes, thank you very much. I was expecting this uh, because where the problem started was Buhari's weaponization of nepotism. And we knew the way he was going about it, he was going to ultimately become very frightened that if a Notana comes from, I mean, a Sultana becomes president, that all those things he was doing to try to now force advantage for a single ethnicity will all be scattered. Because when Obasanjo was president, the same thing was stacked up during the military era. That's why you're seeing a lot of what they're holding on to are advantages they stacked up during military era. When Obasanjo became president, Obasanjo neutralized it all, removed all the soldiers they put everywhere, removed all the weaponizing nepotism you know, platforms they built, and returned the country into a place where everybody had a sense of belonging. So the minute Buhari became president, and Buhari started that is pro Fulani strategy of not only ethnically cleansing all their nationalities of national institutions and federal parasitos, top hierarchy positions, also cleansing some in, Ka Ka in Kasina, Kankara, Kaduna, Plateau, Benue, Taraba. So and what you simply knew, these people he brought in from Mali, Central African Republic, uh, Mauritania, and other places to come and take those lands after cleansing, the minute Buhari left, the indigenous people were very likely to chase those people away and take back their land. And it was as a strategy, fears that if Buhari leaves, those legacies will be wiped up because next president, if he does not, if he comes from somewhere else, will simply return Nigeria back to normalcy. That is what is driving this. Well, so based just on second. that fear that whoever comes will neutralize well, just Buhari's nepotism games and return the country back to normalcy, that's why you're seeing them doing this. I saw this when they were well, flying to Nojo, reserve. If, if, if you can hear me, if, if you can hear me on this same issue... Uh, Dr. Anunuji, just one second if you can hear me. Uh, there are those who believe yes. that it, it shouldn't matter, and I want to believe that you would agree with th that as well. It shouldn't matter where any leader in Nigeria comes from if we have good governors. There are a number of people who have said that, you know, so that it shouldn't matter if the leader, whoever it is that is in office at any given point in time, is, ens is ensuring good governance for, for the good of all. But uh, there is something that you 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 have you're also aware of here, especially in this whole com conversation, concerning specifically the issue of rotation of presidency, power shift, uh, so to speak. Since this fourth republic began, it's always been a conversation that we have had, and right now it seems it's the same thing that is happening again. As far as you are concerned, where do you stand on this matter? Well. The rotation and primarily the issue of uh, uh, affirmative action, which in Nigeria is called the quota system, was actually uh, arranged so as to accommodate the notes. And then when we also came to everything we were doing, we said there has to be federal character to give people a sense of belonging. But it will, only that federal character will ensure that our diverse heterogeneous society have a sense of belonging in what we call the Nigerian experiment. But where you will, as you've seen, just the way Buhari has weaponized nepotism, a lot of people are not given a sense of belonging. That's why you're seeing the youth who are not as gentle as we, the elderly, will not embrace separatism as their own way of protesting that. And Buhari is going this far to get these governors to say they will never hand over power. The power will only stay with them. Don't forget, 
a lot of indigenous people in the northern part of can Nigeria you confirm that that position of the northern the, governors just one south. second just one second it's a meeting of governors can you confirm that there is evidence from you that the position of the northern governors came from the president yes yes the do you have documentary evidence to the effect they get do you have documentary the evidence to the way. effect There is, the Northern governors historically do not act without the body language of the president saying, go ahead and do it. But do you have documentary evidence to this one, this particular claim that you have made? I do not have document for this, but I have, uh, I have historical conventions to show you that none of them have ever stood up or gone against any policy President Buhari has vouched support for okay let, let's, go to, let's go to let's go to let's go to dr Suleiman on the same issue well dr Suleiman, um when we had this conversation with um, um mr ebon yesterday concerning the issue of uh, power rotation and all his position uh, came from section 14 sub 2 of the 1999 constitution which says that uh, which provides that no section of the country should express or ex entertain dominance over other segments of the constitution. And for him, as far as he's concerned, that is good ground for power rotation, which according to him is enshrined in the constitution on the manifestos of both the APC and the PDP, the two leading parties in Nigeria. So concerning this issue of power rotation, should we really be making an issue of it? Now, seriously, I agree with you, but first let me clear the misconception. That is not an express uh, provision for power, power rotation, power shift. It's not that I'm against power shift, but there are two things to power shift. If power shift will give us peace for some time so that Nigerians will grow and groom leaders that will now lead us despite, in spite of wherever they come, it's welcome with me. But people fail to realize the root of power shift. The root of power shift arises out of reality of fragility of Nigeria and out of experience of uh, Biafara, Biafara war. You know, every war, especially terrible wars, leave behind an experience of progress in humanity. For instance, First World War brought off a lot of development. Second World War, World War after which occurred between 1939 and 19. Uh, 45 brought in uh, the United Nation Human Rights uh, United Nation Human Rights Declaration in 1947, uh, Geneva Convention in 1949. A lot of developments globally developed after war. So out of Biafra, Nigerians realized the need to keep the nation together, and that is why federal institutions like uh, what do you call it NYC come in. That is what brought about federal character. That is what brought about power shift after the gentle of saga and all that. Now, this reality, because among the politicians, you still have reasonable ones, who when the country pushes itself to an edge, just like uh, Tony Momo captured in his book, Experience in Disintegration, after the gentle of, you have reasonable people who voice out to speak. And common Nigerians want peace. And that is why immediately after June 12, Northerners were ready, common, even common Northerners were ready for the two contestants to come from the south. So this is an inbuilt internal arrangement. Now, when somebody comes to destroy this inbuilt arrangement with an assumed constitutional intimidation, you have a problem. And as far as we are concerned now, we are having a serious problem that you have Nigerians, even like my commentator, my co-commentator now is discussing, you can see him talking in terms of they and us. And when you have Nigerians now approaching national issues from they and us, then it is dangerous. A lot of countries have faced this, and the end was catastrophic. And that is why some of us are saying that instead of raising this hyper, all our governors who are now using their enormous power to cause this problem, because the South, this thing is coming from Southern, it started in July from Southern governors. The response is coming now from Northern governors. And these governors, they are not the exclusivity of Nigerian interests. I think it's high time for educated ones among Nigerians 
to start speaking up against on this day and us. Uh, so, Dr. Sulaiman, want... yeah, just a minute. So, when you say that uh, after the war, there was a need to keep the country together, does that then yes. mean that, uh, or be, uh, does that mean that a section of the country will dominate leadership and keep other sections of the country out? Because, I mean, that's always a point where people misconstrue it when people refer to that technology in this case. Yes, I I agree with you. I don't believe in unity that dominates. I also believe in fair play. But I want fair play and domination to be an in internal development. Because you don't force it. When you now employ divisive policies to achieve in the name of uh, fair play, you'll be creating, it's like uh, Obama said, those whoever uses division to achieve power will now have division as he's uh, confronting his governors. Experience have shown that this pattern they are approaching to leadership will, at the end of the day, produce a leader who, at the end of the day, will all, always think of where am I coming from first. Now, look at the way he's talking about Buhari presidency. Now, as far as Buhari presidency is concerned, some Nigerians are looking at it as Northern presidency. But, Chamberlain, what do we think of a situation where we have talented professionals, Nigerians? See what you people are doing in channels. So, where we have professionals coming, I don't mind wherever they come from. Let them come from Akwa Ibon. Let them come from Potakot, Meduguri, or where it was ever. It's high time we take our destiny out of these politicians that use us for power. He's not talking about tribe. Chamberlain, the reality of Nigeria is that we don't have tribes. There are only two tribes. I, I, there are only two tribes in Nigeria. The elites and the masses. They employ this tribal division to gain power. But as soon as they get the power, they move out. A lot of these people who sound tribal, tribal, tribal position, at the end of the day, you see them changing position, changing parts. So the reality is that let's avoid talking in tribal or religious terms. Well, Dr. Ononiju, uh, you, you've listened. J just, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we'll get uh, Dr. Suleiman back um, in good enough time. So, Dr. Ononiju, uh, this conversation is definitely unending, and a number of people are wondering, uh, this whole drama, so to speak, that is happening is because of the class, caliber, or style of politics and politicians that we have on our hands right now. And there are those who believe that it's about time we evolved a completely different set of politicians who will... Uh, obliterate the us them dichotomy that's only you know served their interests over time and give the power to the people indeed how do you think we should go about that i think uh, we are about getting there because if you also ask me i will tell you there are advantages to be gotten from buhari's incompetence in managing our diversity uh, because uh, through his weaponization of nepotism uh, Nigerians have woken up and that waking up has forced some sort of unity among some ranks that I have historically never ever noticed I saw Nigerians in New York uh, campaigning uh, this past one week uh, united in a way that they have never been before it was always easy to divide them at home. But to see them unite to campaign for a better society with people from disparate ethnicities, for me, that is a plus. So I give that positive to President Buhari's uh, use of nepotism. I believe President Buhari's incompetence has unintendedly united Nigerians in a way that I think brings advantage to the Nigerian project. I also think what the Northern governors have done is also very good, unintendedly. Those of us who didn't understand all we were saying, that look, because of Buhari's weaponized nepotism, it will be very difficult for his, him and his people to allow power to shift, because if it is shift, they will be afraid that the Obasanjo equalization 
will also occur again. And just when they did that meeting two days ago, I was excited that they have finally gotten me right. And it was expected. It was expected. That's why you saw them <coughs> playing I'm, with I'm all sorts of options. Uh, forgive me, Dr. Anonuju. I'm, I'm wondering you. how you can help. Because I, what I'm looking for, what I'm hoping to hear from you, I'm not uh, particularly getting yet. But let me ask that same question in a different way. Section 15, sub 2 of the 1999 Constitution as amended says, and I quote, National integration shall be actively encouraged whilst discrimination on the grounds of place, of origin, sex, religion, status, ethnic or linguistic association or ties shall be prohibited. While this may have been happening over time, it would seem like from most, much of what you have said, uh, you are not actively discouraging some of these things that are mentioned in the Constitution. I discourage it by speaking up against those who practice it. That's why I have been condemning Buhari's employment of nepotism as policy. In that same because vein, in that say, same vein, Dr. Anonuju, just one second, just one second, Dr. Anonuju, just one second, just one second. In that same that vein, just, just one second, together. just one second. Yeah. In that same vein, uh, rather than condemn, why not just give counsel? What are the things that ought to be done that are not being done as opposed to just condemning? You know very well, much better than I do, that uh, what, what they call, you know, you know, constructive criticism. Uh, some of the things that, some of the theories that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, intelligent uh, academics like you would propose, uh, would always propound, is the style of politics practiced by President Obama. While, you know, attacks were coming at him, he was just focused on the issues. Can we focus on the issues here and leave out the personalities? Yes. Uh, the very nice way right now to heal, if you want me to suggest, to quell agitations, take the presidency to the southeast. The two parties should take the presidency to the southeast. We did that when the Yorubas were angry at the annulment of Abela's election. The two parties took their presidency to the southwest. And in doing that, they quell the crisis by the people on the Duduwa front. Take the presidency to the southeast of Nigeria, and you will see a champion will come from there to become president. And then we'll start to tell the young people who are currently involved in separatism that that may not be the right way to go, that there is, after all, intentions to reintegrate everybody. I think taking the presidency to the southeast will not only stop the insurgency in the north, it will also stop the crisis and the separatism agitation in the southwest, okay. heal the south, so, and give the young people a sense of belonging. But when you continue to do things that seems to exclude them, exclude their people, exclude their areas in infrastructural emplacement, it then gives them the impetus to resign themselves to despair. I don't Dr. think Manager, we should just, um, teach despair to young people. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go to break, but when we return, we'll let both of you talk to us about solutions. We want to hear from you what can further, what further solutions would you prefer such that um, we all move forward. So that will be when we return as we then wind down. So don't go away. Welcome back. It's our concluding moment on this subject matter. So, gentlemen, you know, now talking about your, your solutions and then perhaps explain why. Because at the end of the day, uh, it's clear, I mean, maybe not too clear to a lot of people, but we know that politicians have a way of sorting themselves out behind the scenes. So, not a good idea for the country to work itself up on some of this subject matter. Let me start with you, Dr. Suleiman. What would you suggest such that 
in the interest of peace, equity, and justice be done, especially as it has to do with the next general elections moving the country forward, perhaps in consideration of the situation of the economy as well. Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. Uh, we have individual expectations and we have things that are supposed to be done by the leaders. As individuals, let us realize that Nigeria is in transition. Since the beginning of this democracy for the republic, after every two elections, there is always so much tension around that almost breaks the country. After Obasan just two tenure, there was that problem. After Jonathan's two tenure, there was that problem. Nigeria is supposing is approaching that dangerous time. So this is the time for people individually to observe the strength. You can see I've not spoken in the way my colleague have just spoken. I've not allowed my sentiment to take over me. I've not allowed Rumo to guide my thinking. As an individual, this is what we should do. As governors, our leaders, they should start, stop using politics to divide us just to get what they want. Let us start grooming. Governors have been given so much power under Nigerian federal institution. I had, I, 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 I wish I had, I had the time to, start to, to, to point out since independence to this time, how we have been moving from confederation with tri unity government and how our fault lines have always been setting us against each other. Now, these governors that are so powerful, they are now setting us against each other. But there are very good examples for them to learn. There is a governor, I don't want to start mentioning them, names. There is a governor in the South who used his position instead of dividing to even bring people from other states, groom leadership, and that leadership is having an influence nationwide now. Let these governors, instead of dividing us, let us start grooming leaders, leaders that have capacity, leaders that can develop. Let Nigerians realize that the world, the world has gone so far and the world is not waiting for us. Let us realize that every country now looks at its own fault line, comes up with what to check that fault line and move ahead. Malaysia, Indonesia, they have problems. But what they did, they look at their fault line, they develop a national common identity, they forge this common language, common identity, and move ahead. Now, other countries that fail to manage this end up in catastrophe. The uh, United States had fault line. They even fought so, Simon, but you know, you know the, the, the thing is, in our present situation, and in consideration of the current position of northern governors and traditional rulers and that of the southern governors on where they think the president should come from in 2023, how do we specifically address that such that everyone can indeed see that, well, really and truly, this has been done in the interest of equity, peace, and justice? I mean, so that, you know, when they say it should not just be done, it must be seen to have been done. Chamberlain, Chamberlain, both of them are not serious. I'm telling you seriously, they will come to settle. And you will say, I've said that. That one is not a problem. The main problem is for Nigerians to realize that it is time. This generation of changing, we have gone into two or three generations of powership. Let us now start moving away from the idea of my president into an idea of a president for Nigeria. Let us have people now speaking for Nigeria. But for now, like you said, my advice is that Nigerians should try to adopt uh, fair play. I also believe in fair play. I also believe that if a, a president comes from one side, another side should also have a president. I agree in that, but I don't agree in intimidation. I agree in, in a system where Adiola was able to go to Kano and buy more votes than a Kano indigen who was a ship I, I agree. I believe in a system where, like in 1999, northern politicians come together and they all concluded that let the president come from the south. Let us, Nigeria, start going into a healing system, not a wounding system. And you can see some of our leaders and politicians are not adopting that. And that is where the problem is coming from. Because if you divide, if you keep on yeah. with this divisive approach, the problem will not be solved. Politicians right. are just using that as a bargaining tool. Okay, just, just hang on a minute. Dr. Nonji, uh, so um, go ahead and give us your what will your solutions be just as we said at the end of the day they will sort themselves out and the people perhaps will just uh, get the short end of the stick and then they'll carry on not knowing that they have sorted themselves out how do we mainstream the people as opposed to just letting politicians run the show the people should use the current happenings as awakening calls wake up and be involved in the politics of Nigeria. It's when they are seen to be aloof 
to not mind what goes on. That's when those who intend to undermine them and their heritage will continue in this, their chosen fashion. The people must wake up and be involved in the politics of Nigeria. The gentleman who said, uh, my colleague, uh, that I speak differently from how he speaks, we're very different. He works for a government institution. I'm a free Nigerian, so I'm very autonomous. I can express myself the way I wish without fear of any government's reactions. No. So he can talk the way he talks because he works for a government institution. We're not the same, so you cannot compare two of us. I will continue to put my voice in regards to give voice to those whose pains cannot be expressed. And I know I speak, I speak in line with the position of the Middle Bed Congress, who released a letter yesterday signed by Dr. Podus Pogu. I agree with that letter, asking that the presidency be rotated. The same way Governor Zulum said before, the presidency be rotated so that all parts of Nigeria should have a sense of belonging. We have six geopolitical zones. Let people understand those six geopolitical zones harbor people who belong to this diverse country. Let our heterogeneous nature be reflected in the way that we allow inclusion in a way that all parts of Nigeria can have a sense of belonging. If there are laws in our books and they are challenged in court, let what the court say be respected, even if it do, does not favor me or favor whoever is my friend. Let's learn to live according to the rule of law. Let those who claim population show it, not just only during election, but also in satellite imagery, let us capture the first population. Let us also capture that population in school environment. Let's capture it in VAT payment. Let's capture it in economic activity. You don't just fraudulently write numbers and then use control over INEC and then the army to keep those numbers because they've been fraudulently kept that way since the days of military rule. We must now begin to allow for those things that are seen to be transparent that will build confidence in the polity, like open, free, transparent voting, like free transmission of electoral results. You don't come to the South when it's an election, you bring in the card reader. When it is in the North, you leave it so that numbers can be inflated. Then after, after some time, it becomes convention. Oh, the, not, the number from Kara Namuda is 6 million people. The one from Aba is only 240,000 people. How can those things make sense? You now give more numbers to Kasena than you give to Ibado. You give more numbers suddenly now to places like uh, Huntua than you actually will give to Wedi. And after some time, you say that is how it should be. That is a fraud. We must stop the numbers fraud. Allow economic growth driven by champions who understand that it is the aggregation of several players in the economy that actually gives you stimulus. Not government policy of borrowing money to spend on recurrent expenditure or That's borrowing right. money to spend on Niger Republic. And when you ask President Buhari, he say he has his cousins in Niger Republic. So okay. he wants let, to let, let's bring Niger in Dr. Suleiman on this one. Look at what we are. 98 okay. to 1. Just, just hang on a minute. So, uh, Dr. Salaiman, in context, I mean, you know, some of these issues, I know you did reference fault lines that politicians like to take advantage of. How do we address that? And then, given the current back and forth as to what should happen, who should it be in 2023? So, as an independent, perhaps not uh, tied to any political leanings, what would your position be concerning where the president or presidency should come from in 2023. Thank you very much, Chamberlain. This is a very good question to round up this discussion. But let me clear this concession before I proceed. First of all, I want my colleague to know that I'm a lawyer because and this gives me the knowledge of my rights that nobody can deny, even my employer. Second, I'm an academic and I choose being an academic because of the academic freedom it entails. Third, I am a human rights activist. And when you switch, I even go against the government. That is why I led the Occupy Kano opposition protest in Kano a few years back. Now, 
So whatever I'm speaking, I'm speaking out of the truth as I see it, not because of favor, favoritism or, or linkage to any gov government. Now, uh, coming back to your question, you people as media have a role to play. And the role you have to play is to give voice to areas. Let some of us come up and take our destiny into our hands. Let us not leave our destiny in the hand of politicians who divide us our power, and as soon as they have power, they come to, to dine and wine together. Let us realize that all we need in Nigeria now, of course, as far as this probable tension is concerned, is better to give a sense of belonging and let the power shift. But let us, after this time, start thinking of grooming Nigerians to lead those because these problems that are on the ground, there are so much economic problems in the city. We have so much, especially if you travel abroad, you will now realize that there are a lot of things that cannot be solved by a, a, a regional or tribal presidency. These problems require somebody that has been groomed, that understands global trends, and can now think locally to move Nigeria up. Chamberlain Nigeria have serious challenges. I feel so... I feel so bad that Nigeria at this point is still bickering over the president coming from the south or coming from the north, or whether you assess a president and call him anyhow, any name, because he's not coming from your region. I would like us to have a situation where Nigerians start thinking of capacity. For instance, Nigerians now are thinking of good luck. Some Nigerians are now calling good, good luck Jonathan. Why? Because some of them, at the end of the day, they assess and they saw some qualities in him of bringing Nigerians together. I'm not saying he must be the best candidate, but for instance, I'm just looking at the available chances. For, for instance, there are a lot of people talking about Tinubu. Tinubu has proved himself by grooming leaders. Some people are thinking of Tambo. Tambo, Tambo may be in PDP, but he has proved his leadership capacity when he was speaker. And there are a lot of Southerners Southern that have very good capacity. Let us start thinking of concentrating on Nigerians that have capacity. And there are a lot of Nigerians that think in Nigerian terms. For instance, Sunusi Lamido, when he was any of Kano, he did a lot of things to protect Igbos and others that are in southern Nigeria, and he even ensured that they are recognized as indigenous in Kano. There are a lot of politics that he intervened. Why can't we have Nigerians that speak for Nigerians in the interest of Nigerians, not in the interest of their tribe, not in the interest of their religion, but in the interest of the whole Nigeria, because our destiny is attached and linked to Nigeria. If it wins, we win. If it fails, we fail. Well, uh, you as, and uh, Dr. Nonujo seem to be in agreement on this matter, so let me take it back to him. And this particular issue of grooming leaders, uh, Dr. Nonujo was speaking the other time, just before we went on break, that uh, we should talk, to, we, should, we should raise youths, we should involve youths in the process. So, Dr. Nonujo, I'd like to ask you, how do you suggest that we go about that one in particular? Just as you said, a sizable number of people believe that the youths have been left behind, greatly, largely. In terms of grooming leaders, and you referenced that earlier just before we went on that break, how do you suggest we begin to engage and integrate the young people? There are also those who believe, permit me for emphasizing this, that if we hand power to the if we do any transition with the youths now and it's not really done well we haven't groomed them and we hand power to them they may not be able to do things the way we expect no matter how good our intentions may be so in terms of grooming leaders for the next generation how in your opinion should we be going about that the number one thing that excludes the youths is the weaponization of nepotism. If you allow youth who do well to come into the stream of leadership, youths are the ones driving fruit wave. It's youths that are suddenly involved in the fintech companies that you are having. Foreigners invest hundreds of millions of dollars in those fintech companies. If the youth have the intelligence to do those things and then you're having adults, elders, borrow money for recurrent expenditure, you don't need to ask yourself who will do better. 
the youths have grown up to be Nigerians. And we must allow them to be Nigerians. Well, and Dr. Nanuju, Dr. Nanuju, to allow just, the youth inclusion. Just is the question then is: nepotism. the question is, how do we begin to engage the youth, involve them in the process? I mean, you've talked about the private sector, and you know very well, as many people would agree, that there is a difference between running a public sector and running uh, the, the running the public sector and running the private sector, completely different things. So in terms of running government for the good of governance, for the good and governance of millions of Nigerians, how do we begin to engage the youth? They have opportunity, they have advantage in technology, just as you have said. How do we bring all that into the process? How? i tell you an instance. I know millions of youths who have graduated but cannot be employed because of our policy of nepotism as being used by the current You're not speaking to the youth, Dr. Nanju. You you're nepotism, not speaking to the youth. Anyway, I have a sense just, of just tell us how. How do you think we can integrate them in politics? How do we integrate That's youth exactly in politics? That's exactly what I'm saying. They're already From the involved. local governments to the state governments to the, to the federal government. How? Remember, in politics, they on their own took charge last year when they organized answers. What did we do? We went to Kefi prison and brought prisoners to attack youths in Abuja. We introduced violence in Lagos. It is us, the elderly, that introduces violence. It is us, us, us also now implementing the false flag operations. You tag operations by unknown government. It is us. All we're trying to do is to do those false flag operations so as to paint our youth as if they are terrorists. We must stop these things against the youth. So all I'm saying, show good leadership. Nigeria is not yet a nation. Allow Nigeria to progress to becoming a nation. A okay. nation does have yeah. ideals. It's an experiment. That's what you call a nation. Experiment built on ideas and ideals, and you allow those experiments to actually take shape, not excluding the youth through weaponization of nepotism. At least it's good it to know that both of you are big agree. issue excluding mature youth, intelligent youth, capable youth from contributing. Well, it's, Last it's good year, to hear they got that, involved um, in politics, they organized and it, it, It's good to know Why that both of you agree against them? on empowering the youths, mainstreaming them in the scheme of things, because, I mean, it's one thing for you know, different groups in political leadership to make such statements. It's a different dynamic when they get to their political parties or amongst themselves and then have those conventions and then whoever emerges, which is going to be an interesting perspective for us to watch in the days ahead. But gentlemen, we have to thank both of you for talking to us today, Dr. Katrin Onuju and Dr. Ahmed Salaman. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much, somebody. Thank you for Thank having me. All right, then we will be back in just a moment and focus on an equally important matter without which I don't know if we'll be doing anything or moving forward, but just join us in a moment. We'll be back. <laughs>